Battlefield 2042 has finally updated one of the worst maps in its collection, completing the studio's original promise to update the game to DICE's higher quality standards, and it's… well, you'll see. Hourglass, the giant desert map set in Doha, Qatar that was heavily featured in both the Battlefield 2042 reveal trailer and gameplay trailer, has had a complete overhaul that removes a huge amount of the content that was originally advertised. The giant stadium on the map, which was arguably one of the cooler combat zones, is completely out of bounds on both Breakthrough and Conquest. And the skyscraper rooftop fighting locations, while they still exist, are barely part of the combat flow. And somewhat ironically, the map plays way better than it did before. It just feels like a very small, basic map now without much in the way of the excitement or spectacle that was originally advertised. And before I get more into those details, I first want to let you guys know about an insane Origin PC giveaway for a custom level cap gaming computer. Origin PC has been my sponsor for almost 10 years, and today they're giving out a PC that is just an absolute monster. It has an NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card, an AMD Ryzen 7950X 3D CPU, an M2 hard drive, 64 gigs of memory. It can play anything pretty much at max settings. It's what I'm running right now, and I gotta say, it's a dream machine. This is about as high end as you can go, so don't miss out on a free PC giveaway. I'll leave a link in the video description on how to sign up. It's actually really easy and only takes a second, so get to it. Alright, let's get back to the Hourglass rework. This map is one that most represents DICE's push toward their crazy 128 player server sizes, and thus it was massive and open in its design to try and facilitate that type of gameplay. However, as time went on, DICE decided that 128 player servers were too hard to balance in order to get the classic Battlefield gameplay, and thus they pivoted away from the larger modes and maps, more or less completely changing the original vision of the game and invalidating a lot of the original design work. And out of all the problematic map designs, Hourglass was one of my least favorite due to the extremely long travel times and lack of infantry cover between objectives, or really cover on the objectives for that matter. It heavily favored vehicles and sniping and not much else. The rework cuts the size of the map down extensively, removing giant areas of the desert and adding in significantly more cover and an expanded underground area that connects two objectives. Infantry have way more cover than before, and the flow of the map plays so much better. It's a massive gameplay improvement without question. But the hype and expectations behind this rework were way out of line with what I think the final result is. DICE saved Hourglass for the last map on the rework schedule due to the size and complexity of the redesign, per their own explanation. And this served to basically hype up the rework as one of the most involved reworks so far, which would make a lot of sense if they were trying to say fit the stadium into the gameplay and find a way to reintegrate the skyscraper or rooftop fights back into the objective play. It certainly sounded like a real map design challenge. However, what we got was them simply cutting out most of the large areas and they redefined the gameplay to a much smaller section of the map. So while it does play much better, it's just confusing as to why it was hyped up as a much bigger endeavor compared to the other maps. I mean, Orbital and Breakaway seem like they must have been much bigger projects by comparison. Breakaway's rework moved the entire oil rig closer to the objective areas to keep the cooler elements in the gameplay. So I was expecting similar treatment with the stadium in Hourglass to at least keep it in the breakthrough version at the very least. Sadly, this was not the case, and what we're left with is a somewhat embarrassing comparison to the original trailer showing crane sniping, massive rooftop firefights, and huge army movements over and around the stadium. Hourglass is a mere shell of the original trailer showcase. That said, I'm at the very least not going to be upset when this map comes up in the rotation. So that's technically an improvement. Am I going to be excited to play on it? 
Probably not. Maps like Breakaway, Exposure, or Orbital will certainly get me excited, but this one just seems like an average map by comparison. And while on its own, that's okay. I think Battlefield definitely needs some just kind of basic combat maps. It's just a tough pill to swallow when I was expecting a lot more, especially since this map was so heavily featured early on and sort of helped create that vision of what players were expecting from a Battlefield 2042's experience. Now it's been more or less reduced to like a desert highway firefight that's just kind of lackluster. You can't even bring down those big arches in the desert, which would have been a nice little update to some sort of bigger destruction event or something. Now, of course, this map isn't the only thing that's new with the 5.2 update. Squad management is now a thing. Squad leaders can now mark objectives for their squad to follow, and when you capture that objective or defend it or whatever, you'll get bonus points. Squads can now be locked, and you can remove players from their squads if you're the squad leader. Squad leaders can also be replaced if they don't issue orders when requested by the squad members. So basically, 2042 now is up to par with the squad management features, compared to past Battlefield games. The final portal weapons have also been updated to support the variety of 2042 weapon attachments with some additional balance changes. These come to the remaining portal machine guns, SMGs, and sidearms. Damage curves and weapon balancing have also been updated to a number of the portal weapons to make them just feel better in general. And they do for the most part. I tested them out. Weapons like the 240 Bravo are much more fun to use now. And this patch more or less completely the main things DICE set out to do when it comes to repairing the game and getting it up to Battlefield standards. Battlefield 2042 is so much better than it used to be and I do have a good time playing it. It of course still has stupid and annoying issues like the fact that crossplay is set to off by default after you patch the game. You literally won't be able to play 2042 until you go into your menu and change a setting and that's been a problem for a while. It's kind of a crazy problem Problem to have and I wonder how many players actually just give up on this game thinking the servers are dead, not realizing that they actually have to enable crossplay to get any of the matchmaking to work. And the front end experience is still problematic, allowing players to join modes with nobody playing. Like literally trying to queue up for games this morning, I was wasting time sitting in an empty queue from clicking the front end matchmaking system. It's just a bit ridiculous having these problems in such a big game when you see games like Battlebit having solved of the matchmaking problem. Nonetheless, here we are. Finally, DICE having addressed the major issues with 2042, adding a scoreboard, improving the end around experience, reworking the specialists into sort of a class-based system, doing extensive weapon class and vehicle balance, reworking a lot of the menus, bringing in portal weapons to the base game, adding better squad systems and voice comms, and reworking all of the original launch maps to better facilitate improved gameplay. It's taken a long time to get here, but DICE has finally delivered on their original promise and will continue to support the game for at least an additional season beyond this. Sadly, things like Portal and Hazard Zone seem to have been sacrificed along the way. You can still play Portal, but it doesn't seem like it's getting much more support. But the base game is actually quite fun now, and it's a better time than ever to squad up with friends in Battlefield 2042. One of the bigger questions now is just how long will 2042 continue to receive support from DICE and how will it transition to the next major title? DICE has been through the ringer with 2042, but they stuck with with it and managed to repair some of their integrity. But without question, it's left a wound so big in the franchise that it could have crippled the franchise indefinitely. Only time will tell if that is the case. What are your thoughts on the latest update for 2042? Are you enjoying the game? Let me know in the comments. And next up, check out this video showing how Battlebit is doing so many things right. As always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.